The question of what evidence is currently available to support the widespread use of face coverings by members of the public received considerable attention of late. Please since mandatory face coverings were introduced in covered public spaces in the UK, including most recently vestment practices. In this series of presentations, we'll explain how face coverings work, introduce different types, and discuss evidence to support their wide use by members of the public to respond to the COVID-19 crisis. In this area, evidence is rapidly developing, with government advice frequently responding to such advances. To gain access to most recent advice, please visit the UK government's guidance page via the link displayed at the bottom of the slide. In this first video, we will discuss how face coverings work. When we breathe, speak, sneeze or cough, we exhale water droplets of varying sizes. For infected individuals, the virus causing COVID-19 has been shown to be contained within such droplets, particularly those of submicron and supermicron sizes. To give you an idea of how small a single micron is, you can fit thousands of micrometers in a single millimeter. And the virus responsible for COVID-19 itself is actually around 0.1 micrometers. So in other words, 10,000 viral particles would fit within a single millimeter. Face coverings work to block movement of droplets and other particulates in or and or out of the mouth and nose, thereby reducing local contamination with the virus. There are various types of masks that complete this task with varying efficiency. For example, the European Union has three grades of standardised face covering, known as the filtering face beat, FFP, defined as an increasing efficiency to block particles from the sub-micron particle size and larger. By now you will all be aware that beyond FFP, there are a wide variety of other face coverings available. Of face coverings intended primarily for preventing virus transmission, if you are infected from yourself to others, as we perhaps gaining most recent popularity are the homemade or cloth masks. These are made from a variety of materials and tend to be used multiple times being washed between the use. Also available are surgical masks, generally designed for single use, and the FFP1 and FFP2 face coverings noted earlier. The FFP face coverings frequently possess a filter are technically referred to as respirators, and prior to COVID-19 were most frequently used by the building trade to prevent large particulates, such as building dust, being inhaled by workers. However, they also possess some ability to block exhaled particulates, including droplets, with FFP1 being approximately 80% efficient at blocking submicron and larger particulates, compared with 94% or FFP2. Please be aware that many available face coverings contain a valve highlighted here. This is intended to make exhalation more comfortable for the wearer, but unless specifically stated, is unlikely to contain a filter that efficiently blocks water droplets. As such, these valve face coverings are not effective at reducing risk of virus transmission. You might have also heard of N95 face coverings. This is a standard set in the USA, with N95 being broadly comparative with FFP2 face coverings. You might have also noticed visors and goggles gaining wider use, particularly among shop or restaurant workers, hairdressers or barbers. These are used in hospitals, primarily to reduce risk of infected fluids splashing into the faces of medical staff. As far as we're aware, it is currently unknown how effective visors or goggles might be at reducing transmission of the virus responsible for COVID-19. There are also some face coverings intended to both protect yourself and others, including in the EU, FFP3, and in the US, N99 and N100. These all exceed the 99% filter capacity efficiency. However, while it could be tempting to simply opt for these seemingly most effective face coverings, in the light of a massive increase in global demand and corresponding shortages, these should be reserved for health professionals alone who are in direct and repeated close contact with COVID-19 patients. As these health professionals would also tell you, 
These higher efficiency face coverings also come at a cost to personal comfort, particularly when worn for extended periods of time. Thank you for listening to our first video about face coverings. If you'd like to learn more about evidence supporting the use of face coverings in light of COVID-19, we invite you to watch our second video. Thank you.